Okay, welcome everybody. Thanks for joining us for this action workshop. And um, we've got uh, an, a good chunk of time, so we're going to be working on this over the next hour together, which is fantastic. Um, and um, we've got two two people presenting to us, so that's that's great. Um, but just to help them to feel like they're not they're not just presenting into the ether. It'd be great for you to use the um, comment space um, to raise questions, to to give responses to what they've been sharing, to perhaps offer different perspectives or, or different links. So let's try and, and make it as interactive as possible. What we're going to do is we will um, make sure that that um, Chris and Ed don't talk for longer than 50 minutes so that we've got time at the end for um, some questions to, to be raised from what you've put in the chat space. Uh, but it might be as we go through that, that Chris and Ed actually pick up on what you're putting into the, the comments area and, and interact with that as they go. So we'll just try and make it as interactive as possible. But, um, but let me just hand over. So we've got Chris Woodfield um, from the Sustainable Earth Institute, who I have the pleasure of working with on the Low Carbon Devon project. And he's going to get us going in terms of looking at these certified B corporations. And, and Chris will introduce and come in and just bring animating bits as, as we go. So thanks so much. Get out of the way. So that Chris and thank you. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, thanks, Paul. Thanks for the introduction and welcome, everyone. So as Paul says, my name is Chris Woodfield and I work here at the University of Plymouth on the Low Carbon Devon project. So I'm going to be talking about B Corp um, and why it's important, what it is um, and really how you can how you can take ownership of it and really provide just the background of the start of your B Corp journey. So as I said, we're based in the sustainability hub here at the University of Plymouth. And I would love to welcome you to our beautiful space um, on the University of Plymouth's campus. It's got this beautiful backdrop of an amazing green wall. Um, so we're not there in person, but hopefully sometime in the future, we can welcome you there. Um, Naomi, if you're able to bring those slides up, I think they're not showing at the moment. That would be awesome. And it's a beautiful space, um, a collaborative and partnership space here we've got at the University of Plymouth. And as I said, it's a real shame we can't be there in person, but hopefully upcoming events, we can actually meet there and have a conversation together in real life. Um, are they showing okay? I think they're still not showing. but that's cool, we'll move on. Um, just having a few technical difficulties as always with these amazing online events. Um, I'm gonna be talking about what B Corp is, why it's important and how we can start you on your B Corp journey. Um, and that's really what today is about. As Paul mentioned, we've got um, Ed Bird from Bird Eyewear coming up to to chat about what B Corp is and why it's important from them. They're a local B Corp based here in Devon. Um, so Ed will be sharing a bit more about their B Corp journey shortly. But first of all, I'm just gonna set the scene around how you can become a B Corp and really just give you hopefully that dose of inspiration or spark of actually, yeah, this could be for me. Um, so what I wanna do is just set the scene um in terms of well actually let's just take a moment to pause you know we're at the end of nearly at the end of the first day of the conference um we are nearly halfway through the year um and what a year it's been in terms of the uncertainty that we're facing at the moment um it's a really challenging time but for me, it's a really exciting time. And I think B Corp is one of the reasons why I'm excited. You know, what we do in the next two to three to four to five to 10 years will determine how the next 100 years will look, will feel, and what will be like. 
And although that is incredibly uncertain and challenging, we've got ecological breakdown, climate and racial injustices, social and gender inequalities. For me, actually, that's really epically inspiring. You know, it's it's a time to learn, to listen, to grow, to to explore how we can deliver transformational change. The what, the why, and the how of not just doing things less badly, but how, and not just doing good a bit better, but how we can actually shift from good to epic to inspirational at the speed and scale that's required to deliver that regenerative, that practical and that systemic change. And for me, B Corp is one mechanism in which we can do that. And that's what this workshop is gonna be exploring. Um, if we could have next slide, please. So that's my details. Um, feel free to get in touch with me at a later date and we can continue the discussion. Feel free to print screen this or, or take a photo. Um, and let's explore actually what B Corp is. Um, as I said, Ed's gonna be joining us shortly, but I'm just gonna set the scene. And really B Corp is, if I could sum B Corp up in a sentence, it's really about environmental and social certification. It's an environmental and social good standard, which puts people and planet first. So next slide. And you may have heard this phrasing of using business as a force for good. That's the sort of B Corp um, tagline. And it's the certification standards that businesses can achieve. So whether you're a business, you're um, a social enterprise, you can sign up to what is called the B Impact Assessment. And I'm gonna go through that shortly. And it goes hand in hand with the sustainable development goals. So that it's a holistic assessment of your business operations. So the SDG shown here on the screen, the 17 global goals that we're aiming to achieve by 2030, the B Corp movement is one mechanism which will help us on our path to achieving those. So it's really about creating that world that we all wanna live in. And what I'm gonna do now is just hopefully show you a very short video that just sets that scene. That's gonna just, I'll just bring this up now. Dear society, right now we're acting like we're enemies when really we should be friends. Dear society. The video showing okay, just to check. Acting like we're enemies when really we should be friends. Dear society, we are done with doing what we're told. And dear society, we are people and not objects for you to control. We have an extreme future ahead of us. We either have extreme changes to our economy and our business practices that will allow us to reach the 1.5 degree targets that the IPC say, or we have an extreme future of climate breakdown, ecological breakdown, and mitigation. We've got the wrong model of business. The purpose of business is not solely to produce profits. The purpose of business is to produce profitable solutions to the problems of people and planet. Business needs to stand up, not just in operating a better business, not just in standard CSR, which is not going to hit us in the right direction. We need to drive systems change. I think we all need to be activists. And for me, I think the platform for activism is becoming a big call. I think this is very important in terms of how we mobilize um, citizens of the world who uh, are buying things, who are investing their money, who are working for or with companies. 
so that together we really can create the world that we all want to live in. And so we're really proud to be a B Corp and we hope that the change that we all want to happen will happen at the speed it really needs to happen at to support our children and our grandchildren and that wonderful young woman who just did her poem on stage. Awesome. Well, that was just to set the scene around um, the the B Corp movement. That video was taken um, just before lockdown in a B inspired event in London. And it's really a global movement of positive change um, to really emphasize that B Corp is, a route, is about creating that world that we want to live in. And I'll share these resources and slides. Really happy to do that if people want to get in touch um, afterwards. Really happy to share any of the content and links to some of the stuff I'm going to be showing. But just a bit of background and history. B Corp is a fairly recent movement. It was founded in the USA um, back in 2006. And the B stands for benefit. So in case you're wondering, it's Benefit Corporation, which is shortened to B Corp. You know, there are now over 4,000 B Corps across 77 countries, and it's an environmental and social certification standard. And I'll delve into a bit more detail around what that actually means, but it's looking at purpose, profit, planet, and people. And the focus is really around, well, there, first of all, there are a number of uh, well-known companies who are B Corps. Um, Patagonia, one of the pioneering B Corps, Ben and Jerry's, you know, I, you know, I do love ice cream, you know, that old saying, ice cream a day keeps the doctor away. Ben and Jerry's are an upcoming B Corp. We've got Triodos Bank um, on the last slide there. You know, if you could do one thing from this talk, it's to change your bank to Triodos. Um, really simple thing you can do to take action on climate change. We've got some local B Corps here. So we're going to hear from Ed Bird shortly from Bird Eyewear, but we've also got some other great companies here in Devon and Cornwall, um, Finisterre, Riverford Organic Farmers have recently become a B Corp. We've got Greenheart Business Consulting based here in Plymouth, um, Thomas Bourne, and Ward Williams Associates have recently obtained one of the highest B Corp scores in the UK, and they're based down here in the Southwest as well. So we've got this growing global movement but we've also got this growing local movement of using business as a force for good. And the B Impact Assessment is the start of that process and how you become a B Corp. And when you sign up to B Corp, you're signing up to the B Corp Declaration of Interdependence. And that word interdependence is, is really important. And it's about this global economy that uses business as a force for good which is purpose-driven and that is benefit for all stakeholders, not just shareholders. You know, that declaration of interdependence is focused on business conducted as if people and place mattered and that through our products, practices and profits, businesses should aspire to do, not, do no harm and benefit all. And it requires that understanding. And this, for me, is the most important bit around how we're each dependent upon one another, but also responsible for each other and future generations. So it's got that time element as well of what we do now, but also how that impacts what's coming ahead and how we can become good ancestors. So here in the UK, we have B Lab. So B Lab UK, they administer the B Corp community here in the UK and they oversee the B Corp movement at a UK level. They're headquartered in London. Um, and the B Corp movement in the UK is one of the growing movements across the world. So next slide, please. It's the B Corp movement in the UK is the, the um, I think you clicked on the link. <laughs> it's the um, quickest growing movement of B Corps across the world. So it's a really exciting space to be in here in the UK. 
And I think we're pushing to use business as a force for good. And there's something happening at the moment in the movement, which is called the Better Business Act, which is being explored now in the UK of how we can actually legislate for using business as a force for good. And the B Impact Assessment, as I've, me as I've mentioned, focuses on this certification, but B Corp is also more than a certification. You know, it's that community, it's a roadmap, it's a commitment, and it's a movement for positive change. So how do you actually become a B Corp? So I mentioned the B Impact Assessment. So that the B Impact Assessment focuses on five key areas. So they are governance, environment, community, customers, and workers. So the B Impact Assessment is this holistic focus on these particular areas. And it's a self-reported questionnaire that you fill out as a member of your organization. And it asks you questions on each of these four areas. And it's what's really, so this is an example. Um, so I mentioned Ward Williams Associates. You can see their breakdown there. So that's their score overall in the middle. And this is publicly inf available information. So another key point about B Corp is that it's transparent. Um, you can find out where companies are doing well, where they're not doing so well. So as I mentioned, Ward Williams Associates have one of the highest B Corp scores in the country. And to become a B Corp, you have to achieve over 80. So you can see, see on the sliding bar there, underneath the 135, there's the 80 number. So if you if you achieve over 80 on the B Impact Assessment, you can then submit your B Impact Assessment to become a B Corp. And that breakdown for them is on the right. So we've got the governance, the workers, the community, environment, and customers. So you need to get um, a good score on each of those areas. So if you're really good in one area, but not so good in another, it's a really good tool for you to highlight where you're doing well and where you need to improve. And across the UK, there are a number of B Corps with, you can check out across different sectors, across different industries. Um, you can see if there's a B Corp near you and connect with them. So this is a map of the B Corp directory in the UK. Um, you can find on the B Corp website or the B Lab UK website. And just to highlight one example. So this is um, an example of one of the questions within the environment section on the B Corp, the B Impact Assessment. So when you log into the B Impact Assessment on the website, it opens up various questions. And this is an example of one of the questions. And I'm highlighting this because you can see how the B Impact Assessment can be used as a learning tool and resource. So this one's about environmental management system. So it says, does your company have an environmental management system? And you can see there the first tick box is policy statement documenting your organization's commitment. So if you don't have an environmental management system, this is the first step that you take. And then as you can see, the next point there is around assessing your environmental impact across the organization. And then it goes down again to putting targets and objectives in place and then allocating resources to achieve those targets. So you can see how you can use this as a tool in itself to see what you need to do to improve. So it's not just about finding out where you're not achieving so well, but it's actually provide you with a guidance and provide you with a tool in where you can actually improve. Um, so I think that's what's really great about the B Corp. It's not just a stamp, but it's actually an ongoing process of improvement and learning. So I just thought I'd highlight that to give you a flavor of what's on the B Impact Assessment. And once you actually submit your B Impact Assessment, it's not just like, tomorrow you become a B Corp if you achieve over 80, you go through a verification process, which is rigorous. Um, and you can see here a timeline of certification. So B Lab will, it's not just about, 
you saying that you do everything, it's actually checked and verified and you'll need to provide evidence of how you're doing this and what you're doing. So it's a really stringent and rigorous tool. Um, and I think that's why it's so respected um, and it's why it's growing in momentum. But I really want to emphasize it really is the start of a journey. I think once you become a B Corp, it's not just that's it, climate change or social change is solved. It's really the start of that journey. And it's a really amazing tool. So a few key points to take away from that. It's free to register and sign up to the B Impact Assessment. But once you actually submit the B Impact Assessment, the, there's a fee for that. There's an annual submission fee. Um, and it's based on a, how big your company is. So it's a tiered payment depending on how many employees you have or your, your turnover or your sales. Like I've just mentioned, it really can be utilized as a learning tool and resource. So whatever stage of journey you're at, whether you're a carbon neutral company already, you can still gain more learning from the, the B Corp movement. Or whether you're right at the start of your journey or midway through, the B Impact Assessment can really help you. It's a holistic tool. You know, it's recognized as a social and environmental certification standard. And it's transparent, as I mentioned earlier, and it's part of this local and global movement for change. And also B Corp globally and in the UK has a range of different action groups. So there is a B Corp Climate Connect Climate Collective. And at the end of 2019, the B Corp community really stamped their, their commitment towards environmental change by committing to reduce greenhouse gas emissions 20 years ahead of the Paris Agreement. So it's really a bold and ambitious network to be part of. And it's really pushing the boundaries of using business as a force for good. So at this point, I wanted to, to bring in Ed. So uh, we've got Ed Bird from Bird Eyewear. So I think if we, if we can stop the slides and we could introduce Ed. Welcome, Ed. Hi there. Hi, Chris. How are you? Yeah, really good. Um, thank you for joining us. I think that's it would be great to hear more about Bird Eyewear and who you are and, and your journey. So it'd be great to just have a conversation and hear more about why B Corp's in, important to you. So, um, yeah, Ed, over to you. Okay, great. Thank you, Chris. Uh, pleasure. pleasure to be here. And uh, yeah, it's nice to share our story and um, particularly uh, about B Corp and why we became a B Corp. So um, Bird, as a as a brand, we, we launched in 2017. We then uh, became a company in 2018 and then things really started getting going 2019, 2020. Uh, we're a family business based down here in, uh, in the southwest, which is lovely, predominantly in, uh, in Devon. And um, I mean, so what we do, Bird, we make essentially better eyewear for a better world. And like many startups, you know, it started as a bit of a side hustle to try and scratch an itch. And that was, you know, just seeing the ubiquitous use of plastic in eyewear, cheap eyewear that is kind of bought very quickly, thrown very quickly. Um, and we spotted an opportunity there that we could create a better product that not only uses um, you know better materials sustainable materials but we could also try and create a company that stood for something better and um, we'd noticed this was a few years ago that um, in the in the kind of fashion world a lot of brands were already starting to make that change there are a few b corps and um, you know quite a lot of um, of the fashion focus was turning towards sustainability, which was great in terms of materials. But in the eyewear industry, it was still a few years behind. So this was a really great opportunity for us to kind of combine our um, our skills as a team. We did a lot of R and D and research, and um, yeah, we we kind of we started on this journey, and uh, it's been a real roller coaster for us. So you know, we we kind of we launched the company in. 
in 2018. In 2019, in our first trading year, we won Frame of the Year at the Optician Awards, which, which is kind of, you know, kind of unheard of as a brand new, you know, eyewear brand. The eyewear industry is absolutely vast, you know, billions and billions every single year. It's a huge industry. So we were really like the new kids on the block from Devon, you know, turning up to the Hilton in our van, get changed in the car park, and then winning this award alongside, you know, some massive global brands was just incredible. But it was a great example to show the hunger for people and the excitement that there was someone doing something new, something innovative, using sustainable materials in this space. So, um, I mean, for us, going right back to the start, we knew we wanted to create a product that was uh, that was well made, but also made as sustainably um, and with as little kind of um, impact on the planet as possible. But we also knew that we wanted to create a company that did good as well. So uh, we run our, our Shea or Sun uh, project, which is where for every pair of frames we sell, it, um, it helps distribute solar light into projects across Africa. And we're working with a charity called Solar Aid for that. So that's, that's another kind of, you know, really great um, initiative that, that, you know, that has been developing over the years. And it, you know, it kind of demonstrates how, you know, by people's decisions about where they're spending their money, they can have an impact not only on themselves, but on the wider world as well. And um, I mean, for us also, from the very beginning, we knew that we wanted to become a B Corp. That was like our kind of our goal in like in shining, shining lights. Because for many years, uh, being a Southwest family, you know, we'd followed brands like Patagonia, who were a B Corp, and then you know, local brands like Finisterre, who were doing you know just remarkable things on, on sustainability. So we always knew that we wanted to, to achieve that. And um, uh, yeah, Chris, it was really great um, kind of hearing you run through that because I can remember, uh, you know, going back 18 months ago when we went through that process, and it took us a few months to um, to get through the um, uh, the B impact assessment and then to go through the verification. But um, yeah, so we were certified in April last year, and we were the first eyewear brand in the UK to become a B Corp. Only the third in the world to become a B Corp. So for us, that was again, just a real milestone moment for us um, to, to kind of to achieve a goal. Um, but as you rightly pointed out, it's not just about achieving the goal, it's really about the, the journey because for us, going through that process, you know, uncovered all kinds of stuff that we knew we had to um, do more on, do better on. And uh, the great thing about uh, B Corp is that you're reassessed every few years so, you know, we've got plans in place to address certain things, to get even better and progress further um, on, yeah, you know, on many aspects. Um, so, and in terms of what it means for us as a company, it's about, um, I mean, it's about demonstrating that we are, as a business, we're trying to be a, a force for good. You know, it's, um, it's not just a tick box exercise. So it's not that, you know, now we're a B Corp, that's great, we're sorted, you know, we can kind of sit back and relax. Um, but it demonstrates that right from the top of our company, from the kind of governance and structure, right through, um, you know, to the workforce, to how people are paid, um, our supply chains, the material we use, you know, even if we, we are kind of you know, recycling in the office, um, it covers so much. And... Um, we hope that being a B Corp kind of demonstrates that for us, you know, Bird as a company, we are kind of moving in the right direction. Um, and uh, yeah, we'd love, we'd love for more companies then to all be moving in the right direction as well. And um, we chose kind of B Corp over, over, others, over other certifications because it covers the whole company and not just one aspect. So we didn't just want to get our products verified as sustainable um, because um, I mean there, there are I think well there are companies out there which have certified sustainable products but the company is potentially lacking in you know in a few other ways 
So we really like that approach that it covers just everything about the company um, and it makes it you know transparent and, and public as well. Um, so yeah, and for us, you know, just being part of that community, being embedded, um, it's really about embedding it in the culture. Um, the B Corp community is really great. There's lots of idea sharing, which I think is really good. Um, probably for the last 100 years or so, the the um, the progression of of kind of uh, companies and technology and ideas have always been a very kind of secretive thing. You know, copyrights and patents, and people don't want to share things. But the B Corp movement is almost completely the other way around. You know, it's like, oh, guys, you know we need to solve this problem with our packaging, who can help us? And, you know, people will be sharing ideas and sharing their tricks and um, connecting people with, with manufacturers and things like that, because it's all about that forward momentum. It's about achieving those um, sustainable development goals. And the only way companies, businesses are going to do that is all working together and pulling in the same direction. Um, so, so yeah, Chris, I'll, um, I'll I'll hand back to you. But hopefully, that was a good kind of uh, intro to us. No, yeah, that's cool. Awesome, thanks, Ed. Yeah, it'd be cool if if you've got any questions for Ed um, or about B Corp in general, do do put them in the chat, and we can have a look at those. Um, I mean, Ed, I had a few questions for you as well. Um, really lovely to hear um, a bit about your story um, and what I think. You hit hit the nail on the head if you like around that it's not competition it's collaboration and i think that's one of the things that really stands out for me in terms of b corp um but i was just wondering you know in terms of your b corp journey what did you use that when you were starting starting up bird eyewear or did you did you use it right from the start or is it something you came across and then thought let's try and integrate this or how was we it yeah great question we kind of we had it in the back of our minds um like uh you know oh wouldn't it be great if one day we could you know achieve b corp uh, status um so i think that probably had an influence in terms of how we were setting up the company and um you know from like uh, looking at the types of manufacturers we were going to be working with or the types of materials the supply chain um thinking about our our governance and and things like that so yeah i i think it, it definitely helped but then going through the process because it's so in depth you know we then uh, we, we learn so much more by going through that process as well which has been really helpful mm, yeah 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 so it's, it's a great tool isn't it i think um do you think where were the things that you really scored highly on i mean i mentioned those particular four uh, five areas can you give us a bit of an overview in terms of bird? What's what are the things that you're really proud of, and what are the things maybe you you wish you you could improve on? So I think we scored. Um, I'm just looking at our at our kind of B Corp uh, uh, report here online, which which you can Google and find. Um, we did really well on community. Um, we did less well on customers. I think customers was our lowest. Um, but that was that's not because we treat our customers <laughs> badly or anything like that. It's purely because as a brand new startup, we just we didn't have that kind of volume um, of proof. Um, so, but that's something that um, as we're scaling up and we're getting more and more uh, customers, and we're, you know we're getting loads and loads of great feedback, that will all go towards our next um, impact um, report in in a couple of years' time. So. Um, so yeah, and, and like for us as as a small company as well, there are some things that we couldn't control, um, like around like some of the environmental stuff. But that was about where our office was based and things like that. But again, right. so there's there's um there's more things there that we can do, and um, so actually for us, like moving office has 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 been has been a big thing for us in um in um doing better in in certain things. Yeah, yeah, it's having that control over operations, I guess, and energy supplies potentially. Um, yeah. yeah. Have you found that um, there's a couple of questions coming through, so that's great. We'll have a look at those in a minute. I was just wondering if um, you found that uh, your customers or people you're chatting to are like asking for this in terms of it being led by led by the demand. 
Um, have you found that's been from the start with you? Have you found that's your the customers are saying like actually this is great the B Corp. This is just what I was looking for, and they're sort of putting that demand back onto companies. Mm. It's been a real a real mixed bag to be honest, because I think there are there are some people out there that are just kind of tuning in to um, you know their kind of uh, their own personal sustainability and um, how how they live, and there are some people that just really get the B Corp movement and are already tuned in and so you know we've had feedback from people that just loved finding us as kind of the only the only b Corp eyewear brand in the uk um and um yeah and say so, you know oh that's fantastic i'm so glad we found you kind of thing but then there's other people who are just like what's b Corp? can you tell me more or some people are like yeah we've heard you're part of the b club what's that are you beekeepers and it's like, well, no, but let me tell you about it. And then you can educate them. And then they're like, oh, wow, we didn't know that. And we didn't know that there's other brands that are all B Corps as well. And that we can find them all, you know, on the B Corp uh, portal. And so now, you know, there are people that will essentially try and only shop with, uh, with B Corp brands for that, for that reason. So, um, yeah, it's, it's always a really great kind of conversation uh, piece. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's the start of that conversation. And I think, yeah, the movement's definitely growing. I mean, we've got a question related to that in the, the chat from, from Charles um, around sort of maybe we could both have a look at this one. So, it's, you know, B Corps is something that's associated with Patagonia, for example. There aren't that many British apparel brands associated with it. Um, there's a few finished there. Alpkit have recently become a B Corp. Elvis and Cressy. Um, do do you know why there aren't many European outdoor brands that have not joined in? Um, I think it's changing. I think it's definitely becoming more common. But I don't know if you have any thoughts on that, Ed. Yeah, I'm. I'm not really sure to be honest. Um, I think it, it, it's a really great great question and i think yeah i i would love to kind of put this to some of my other people uh, peers um but um as you say i think it definitely is a growing movement it might be um you said right at the start um about how the the, the uk is is one of the fastest growing kind of b corp movements so i think um europe is is potentially slightly slightly behind that so i think they'll they'll, they'll catch up um yeah as as to why there isn't no, I'm I'm at a loss there. I would hope that they're all kind of going through the the B Corp assessment as we speak, or they're all kind of in that you know in that pipeline waiting to be assessed. So hopefully we will have more and more. And certainly I've I've seen um, every day you know I see more and more brands being added. So um, yeah, hopefully before long there will just be yeah an overwhelming majority, which would be great. Yeah, and I think you know the plan is that. The sort of in the ideal world that b corps really wouldn't need to be there that would just be normal um that would be the business um shifting that sort of business as usual to using business as a force for good and then that becomes the norm um and i think you know i was chatting just on that question i was chatting to a local another devon company called um Dewar stone based on in dartmoor yeah and they were going through the b corp the b impact assessment uh, a couple of months ago when I chatted to them. So I think you're right. We are starting to see now that sort of spread over from the USA where it started into Europe and that growing growing movement. And my my feeling is, and chatting to other people involved in, in the B Corp movement in the UK, is that the UK movement can't really keep up with the demand. There's so many people going through the assessment that there's quite a backlog of trying to verify them. Um, yeah. And I think that's great in a way because it shows that it shows that more people are taking the assessment and that more people are are realizing the importance of it. Mm. Um, and that's related to one of the other questions around, you know, can you submit the B Impact assessment more than once before submitting, um, in order to see what you have to work on? Is is that what you did, um, Ed? Well, we didn't. Because we scored over 80 in our initial um, 
assessment. We didn't have to submit it more than once, but I believe that if you if you go through it and you score less than 80, um, you then essentially have created a template for yourself to then work from to improve the, the areas that you need to improve. And then you can, yeah, I'm pretty sure that you can then go through it again or just um, adjust um, the one that you have been working on and then submit again. Then when you go through the verification process, um, it's really like a deep dive into it. So they go through, I think the, um, the, the B assessment is something like, I don't know, 260 questions. There's, there's a good few hundred questions there. It took, it took quite a long time to, to go through it. But um, uh, yeah, then when you go through into the verification process, uh, you, you then go into a, like a really deep dive into all of those areas. Um, and at that point, you can lose points or you can gain points. And so we kind of we, we lost a few points on on some where we weren't sure, or you know some of the answers needed to be tweaked. And we gained a few points where we'd answered uh, what we had thought we were doing, but in fact we were doing something that was that was better. Um, so yes, yeah, so then at the end of that process, you have an adjusted score, which if it's above eighty, then. Um, then uh, you're, you know, you can become certified. Mm. Yeah. Well, that's great to hear that you you're above that on your first sort of attempt. Um, but yeah, you're right. My understanding is similar that you can, if you are below eighty, that you can. There's a period of time after you submit it that you can go back through and, and sort of see see where you can improve on, and then resubmit based on based on amendments to your practices or policies. Um, so that's great to hear. Um, another question from me, Ed, is really have, um, you mentioned, uh, B Corp as the assessment for like the overall, uh, business operations. Mm. And that's one of the reasons why you went down that route because it's that holistic approach. Are there other things that you're looking at in terms of like specifically product based, um, that you could tell us about? Yeah, we are. So, as as kind of as part of our um, as part of our setup, we um, we work with other verification boards to kind of certify our like supply chain and materials. So things like making sure our woods are FSC certified and things like that. Um, but all of that stuff is taken into consideration um, as part of the B Corp assessment kind of during that verification process. Um, and you know, and they ask for uh, certification and proof of um, of things. So, um, but yeah, there, there is there's always more, always more to be done. And I think just to kind of reiterate that it's not it's not a destination, but it, it definitely is a journey that you that you kind of you you forever kind of keeping on on top of things and learning where where you can improve things. And um, I mean, also just to say that you know, B Corp isn't the only verification platform out there there are other really great you know verification platforms out there and there are also companies i mean that i know of i know of lots of companies that aren't b corp uh, certified and that don't carry you know lots of other uh, certifications but are in fact you know super uh, sustainable and you know, have like best practice across the board and are doing an absolutely amazing job. Um, so yeah, I think there's 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 always like a caveat that you know B Corp isn't isn't the be all and end all. I think it's a really good market. And um, I mean, there's some interesting stuff stories you know going around lately about B Corps and about um, you know as more and more companies become verified, um, how do we keep on top of knowing? that you know that they are as good as they as they say they are or are there ways that you can kind of cheat the system or, or so on so i think you know there, there is always more work to be done and that really falls on the brands to be transparent um you know to share you know where the materials are coming from or you know how they do things being open with customers and um but the, yeah the more the more businesses can do that then uh, the better and um you, you touched on the um uh, the better business um 
kind of yeah. project that's just kind of coming in sports and that's um like a b corp led lobbying of the government to, to try and put in legislation to um essentially well, not force but you know but encourage businesses to to do better across across the board so um yeah that would be great to see more of that yeah definitely yeah it's i think it's watch this space isn't it with regards to that um so it's a really exciting time and i think it's yeah it touched on another really important point there around yeah if everyone becomes a beagle maybe it might lose its its sort of um it might be like oh well actually maybe it's too easy and i think that's something b corps are taking into consideration like b lab itself they're continually updating the criteria i know recently they've included a, a stronger emphasis on sort of equality and diversity um as well to, to sort of take into account what's happened in the past past couple of years around black lives matter and around that taking that sort of movement being more in the public spotlight um so b lab itself are amending the the sort of criteria to reflect what's happening so i think that's what's really great about the b corp initiative because it's it's sort of being co-evolved um which is really exciting mm. uh, i don't know what, what you think of that or uh, something else i wanted to ask you is around you know what's what's in inspiring you right now what's motivating you right now you know is there a particular b corp that you're or another company that you're really excited about um well i was uh, i was thrilled to hear about that um ward williams associates and their high score like uh, yeah I'd, I'd love to sit down with them and, and have a coffee and you know, like i uh, as soon as you said that i, I wrote a note uh, down to like to reach out to those guys just be, and that's that, that's a really good example of just you know as a b corp and being part of the community you, you can you know you feel that you can very quickly um get in touch with other b corps and learn from them find out what they're doing in terms of best practice and and how to um you know how to improve your business so uh, yeah that's that's um that's something that's that's really great in terms of uh yeah what's inspiring me at the moment um yeah there's so so many great things going on and you know we're, we're kind of we're following all the um like all the brands you know like patagonia finished there and you know what what they're doing in terms of materials we're doing a lot of work on materials uh, we've just finished a whole set of r d on a new type of type of mailer bag that, you know, that like completely um completely dissolves um similar to uh, what finished there have done as well um so yeah you know just looking at what other brands are doing and uh, seeing if you can apply that to yourself or how you can improve what you're doing um is really good um i've seen there's a couple of quite more questions um one of them is uh, how long does it take to get b corp certified uh, for us it was about five or six months i think from that from starting the application to like getting the, the certification and getting our own um, there's our little B Corp uh, thing made by uh, Elvis and, and Cressy. Uh, but uh, yeah, Chris, as you said, there, I think there is a big backlog at the moment. So it might be, you know, more like eight, nine months, potentially even a year at the moment. Um, but yeah, I'm not, uh, not absolutely sure. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's great. Thanks, Ed. And, and the other question in there is around the active community. And I think that's really a core component of b corp you know is there an active community in terms of once you're certified um so there are sort of regional hubs that are sort of co co co-created really and it's i think it's up to the b corps to to take the initiative and i think like you said there's lots of knowledge sharing and sharing a best practice mm -hmm. you can sign up to a sort of online network called the beehive um where you can connect with other b corps and ask questions and share share ideas but i think you know there's also that there's a i'm not sure if you've been involved in it ed but i think there's a uh a, a way forward to create like a southwest regional hub of b corps is that correct yes yeah so there's a uh, there's a b corp hub in uh, like for cornwall um, there hasn't been one quite come to fruition for Devon, but I think it's kind of it's in the it's in the building. So at the moment it's kind of a Cornwall plus. Um, but um, but yeah, I think the the, the the community is so connected that in some ways, like 
you, you don't need those hubs because B Corps are reaching out to each other all the time. And then you mentioned the Beehive, which is like a uh, it's like a Facebook type platform uh, for uh, for B Corps. So you, you know you, you have a login and you have a feed, and people are posting questions or uh, sharing ideas and stuff. And um, every week, actually, there's a there's like a Beehive roundup, which I find really useful. So even if I don't have time to kind of to, to go on there during the week, at the end of the week, I can read through uh, like some of what's been going on in the Beehive, and you know there are things that pop up there, and just think, oh, that's good. You know, I can I can share what I know about you know how we do this, or um, you know I'd like to talk to that person because they look like they're doing something amazing. Um, so yeah, it is um, it is really. Um, it's 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 a really strong community and um, also really good i think just for holding each other accountable as well because um accountability i think is is key in the in the business world so between business leaders you know being able to um support but also hold each other accountable is is crucial yeah definitely and that supportive space um really just emphasize that that notion of collaboration i think um which is really really cool um thanks for your time ed i've got um a few things to wrap up around what's coming next um but just really want to say thank you for joining us um it's great to to connect with you it's great to hear more about bird um eyewear and i'd maybe love to finish on just um a couple of sentences from you around Maybe what's next? What's what's exciting in terms of bird eyewear? What what should we look out for? But also maybe maybe just three words that sum up your um, B Corp. Why why people should become B Corp in three words? Yeah, three words would be kind of community, purpose, and people. Yeah, I mean like. People always come first, and like you know, we're like we, we like to think of ourselves as a we're a people business that make eyewear um, because you know at the end of the day, people are are what's most important. Um, in terms of what next, what's next for us? We're about to launch our new um, kind of mailer bags packaging, you know, in the next in the next few weeks. But we're also doing some exciting R and D, like I'm making frames out of corn and husks and various other interesting uh, interesting materials. Um, so yeah, and if, if if people want to find out more about us or uh, reach out to us on on social media, you can find us at uh, findyourbirds.com or find your birds um, on any kind of social media platform as well. Do do feel free to, to reach out with any with any more questions. Awesome, that sounds great. Yeah, uh, I trust you've got a pair of your own on you there. Um, <laughs> great. <laughs> birds here yeah nice well um yeah really thanks again ed and um like ed said if anyone wants to get in touch with, with ed you can find them on uh is find your birds and yeah thanks again and really excited that you could join us um and hope to yeah connect with you further in the future yeah great thanks very much much chris <laughs> cheers ed um i've just got a few things to wrap up in terms of what's next for for you potentially on your b corp journey um if we're able to bring the slides back up if that's too, not too much trouble um and move on to the next one um that'd be awesome thank you naomi she's doing a wonderful job um in terms of coming up i mean ed mentioned about connecting with ward williams associates we actually have an event um a couple of weeks from now thursday the 15th of july for your diaries um it's part of our low carbon Devon event series. It's 4.30 on the 15th of July. It's around inspiring ambition and exploring what is purposeful business and what does that look like? So we've got Chris Hines as a guest speaker, um, one of the co-founders of Surface Against Sewage and runs a consultancy called A Grain of Sand. He's an MBE, he's joining us as well as Andy Snapes from Ward Williams Associates and Debbie Luffman from Finisterre and maybe um, another brand impact strategist as well. So that's something to, to really keep an eye out and we'll be continuing the discussion then. So please do come along um, and join us for that one. 
as well as coming up in September in the autumn, we're going to be holding a B Corp focused Inspire Ambition event in September. And then we're going to be running a series of workshops. So uh, through Low Carbon Devon, we're going to be putting on a series of workshops for B Corps to take you through the B Impact Assessment. These are focused on SMEs, so small and medium-sized enterprises. So if you're in the audience and that's you, or you know of a local SME based in Devon who would like to go through the B Impact Assessment but would like that support, we're going to be running some workshops to guide you through that process and help you to become a B Corp. So we're really excited to deliver that um, in the autumn. So again, if you're interested, contact me, get in touch with us, and we can discuss that further. And just lastly, really, just wanted to say, uh, join the global movement. It's a really exciting time. Um, the space that we're operating in right now, as I said at the beginning, it's an uncertain time, but it's really exciting to try and work together for people and planet and using that business as a force for good. And just to wrap up with the final, final couple of images, really, um, those, those are my details. Like I said at the start, do get in touch. Really love to continue the conversation with people who have got ideas, questions, or passionate people that just want to chat. And finally, um, it might have been a long day for some of us, a long two days, but really I just wanted to show this image because <laughs> um, it's a real image. Um, it's not a Photoshop. Please don't do this. Um, I haven't got any anything against people playing golf, but there's people playing golf here and there's a massive fire happening in the background. And for me, this just really showcases that we need to take notice. We need to take stock, but we need to look up. We need to remember to open our eyes, to look up to the world around us and really notice that beauty, uh, notice what's happening and really just, yeah, stand up, go for a walk, um, go for a walk in the woods uh, or jump in the sea, do whatever enables you to be the best you can be. And I think that's it from me. Paul, if you want to come back in and share any final thoughts. No, just thank you so much, Chris. And thank you so much, Ed. Um, that was the easiest chairing I've ever had to do in my life. You were brilliant in terms of making it interactive between the two of you and weaving in the, the discussion from, from the audience. So thank you so much for doing that. And, um, and yeah, totally inspiring. And uh, I'm really looking forward to the future events that are going to continue to help us to think about certified benefit corporations. I think it's a, a really important initiative. Um, so, so thank you. And, um, and we're to time. So what we just want to encourage you to do now is to recognize that it's time for a break. And um, it's a time for, for more opportunity to network and to, and to check out Bird Eyewear in the virtual exhibition hall and to contact Chris within the um, speaker section. Um, but also just to take a break. And then the invitation is at 4.30. We've got a film, um, Eight Billion Angels, that uh, again, if you go back onto the main site for, the, for this conference, you'll find the link for and that will start at 4.30. So thank you so much for joining us and, and thank you again, Chris and Ed. See you soon, guys. Bye-bye.